So why is it that we think that uh, education and workforce development uh, should be better integrated with each other uh, and with economic development? And, and the answer is very simple. When you don't do that, the outcomes are not very good, the education and the employment outcomes. Now, a, a little bit of jargon from my profession. What we basically have going on in the United States is that the demand for skills, uh, education skills, cognitive, analytical, and communicative skills, uh, continues to grow uh, in our labor market. And the supply of a lot of those skills seems to be falling short, especially among our most disadvantaged populations. And whenever that happens, whenever demand outstrips supply, prices go up. In other words, people that have the skills do a lot better than people who don't, and the gaps between them widen. And we've certainly had widening inequality in America in the last 20 or 30 years for a whole variety of reasons. I think this is one of the reasons, uh, this widening gap between people who have the skills and people who don't. And so you hear all these stories in the recession of unemployed workers going back to college, community colleges especially, and they knew that healthcare and health technology remained a strong field despite the recession, and the classes would always be oversubscribed and they couldn't get into the classes because the institutions simply didn't have any incentives to expand capacity uh, in those high demand areas. So I think that's part of the problem of education and workforce not being integrated with each other and the two of them not being responsive uh, to the demand side of the labor market. There's a lot of local economic development that isn't that great. Uh, there's a lot, there's a whole literature on this. Too much economic development at the state and local level has often been you know, throwing goodies uh, at large employers as, as states or localities get into these bidding wars to try to convince a big employer to locate here, and those are zero-sum games. They don't benefit anybody uh, in the aggregate, and they often end up being uh, simply big windfalls for the companies. That's not the kind of economic development we, we want. I think that's not the kind of economic development that most of you have in mind. We're talking about economic development that provides some value added, that actually gets companies to change their behavior, that works with the companies to develop their skill mix, the services they provide to employees, and helps them better access the talent that they often have some difficulty finding on their own. So imagine um, the old sort of way of economic development where you go out and you throw your fishing pole and you hope that you're going to land in a big company and often challenge um, people to ask the question, when was the last time you saw any American city land in a new or big company by throwing that fishing pole? So our focus will be heavily on creating the emphasis around place. So you see on the screen, uh, University Park Alliance, our job basically is to revitalize the 50 blocks surrounding the University of Akron on a two-pronged strategy. One side will be transformative projects, equally important in tandem will be a significant neighborhood restoration uh, process going at the same time. So when you look on approach again, it's all about placemaking. You read through the literature, uh, and it's my belief and my experience that it's going to take a great place. So you can focus on buy innovation, everything you want, but if you don't have the great place, you want to attract the talent, the resource. So our strategy is very holistic about creating a great place. You see on the screen the uh, anchor institutions listed there, um, the major university, three excellent hospitals, biotech institute, three brand new schools. And yet as we began a strategic planning process in 2006, we were struck by the fact that the question that we were asked to address constantly by policymakers, by funders, even by ourselves was what I call the so what question. So you've developed all this housing, you've, you've undertaken all this physical revitalization, but so what? Have you really changed these communities? Have you really improved the lives of the residents who live there? But at the end of the day, sustainable communities is not just about individual programs or projects, no matter how effective or innovative they may be. It's about how these programs and projects are woven together in a mutually reinforcing way in a single targeted neighborhood to achieve greater force and impact. It's about creating inclusive, comprehensive quality of life plans that link physical development with economic and social development, and always with a strong commitment to civic engagement, leadership development, real-time action and implementation. It's about how new relationships among organizations, institutions, and residents create a powerful neighborhood platform to raise the level of effort 
to create a strong foundation that will be there for the long haul to take on new programs, new initiatives, and new challenges as they arise. And I want to stress that building sustainable communities is not just an idea or a concept or a plan. It's a reality.